All right, here we go with another painting tutorial. We're going to look at the uh, Orc Pain Boy. So here's the finished model, bit of a rotation there for you. Um, so this is the new plastic single figure from uh, Games Workshop. Uh, lots of Pain Boys in their history, so uh, this is a really cool model to be able to paint it up with uh, that massive uh, claw sort of hand. So starting off with the base coats going over top of a black flat spray paint, so a wag of flesh here uh, going over all the flesh areas. Uh, mostly doing this first because it's a, kind of the interior of the model, so it's the deepest parts of the model have that color. Uh, next up is uh, lead belcher, so just trying to paint on all of the uh, metal bits here, there, and everywhere. Um, I find that metallics kind of go on a bit messy, so uh, you want to make sure that they don't go on top of the other colors, so you do that one of the first ones. Uh, then I'm taking warp lock bronze here. I'm going to be doing some sort of copper bits later, so I'm just picking out details on the... Uh, various bits of metal there that are going to be slightly different color and that'll just help make things look a little bit uh, more orky. So picking those all out. Alright next up is corn red. Um, I decided to do the pants in corn red. There you go. Um, mostly just to give it a bit of red to the model and I didn't want it to be too bright or anything like that not to take away anything just kind of a dull red so that's why I did corn red not Mephiston red. Uh, there is some Mephiston red on some other stuff. Uh, Death World Forest uh, is the base color I'm using for the Grot Orderly on his back there. And uh, just to give a bit different uh, tone than the Orc Flesh. So kind of a lighter color, green, a bit more of a khaki. Steel Legion Drab going on those Band-Aids. So they're going to be kind of a, a brownish color. I kind of wanted them... They probably should have been a bit more of a whitish color, but whatever. I chose a bit of a brown just to keep things different. Uh, then I'm doing Mornfrang Brown as the base color for all the leather bits. So that's all the kind of strappy things there. And I really should have done the apron before doing this because I had to touch up things later. So flip the order around for this next one. So there's lots of little straps here, there, and everywhere. Um, these add a little bit of detail, so uh, you want to make sure you pick those out. Um, I wanted to do a bit of a brighter brown too. So you, you could do that with uh, uh, Rhinox Hide kind of colors. Okay, Rakarath Flesh for all of the uh, apron there. So this is going to be kind of an off-white color. Um, yeah, going up to the Paled Witch Flesh and all that sort of thing. Okay, the Fang. This one here, uh, I probably could have done this a bit differently because um, I, I end up highlighting this with the uh, Fenrisian uh, Gray much later. Um, so this step I probably could have skipped. You don't need to worry about this. could probably go straight to the Fenrisian Gray. Okay, Xandri Dust for any of the bone bits, um, which I did those things on that tube. I don't really know what those are supposed to be. They don't really look like bone, but uh, they're bone color now. Okay, now that I've got all the base colors done, I'm going nuts with the washes. So Agrax Earthshade over everything that's going to be brown uh, and red in this case, because I skipped doing the Quibor Crimson. You could do either or. Um, yeah, so all of the metal bits, just to give them a bit more of a rusty look, get the Agrax Earthshade. Beltan Green for anything that's green, so Orc Flesh and Grot Flesh. Painting it on there nice and liberally. Trying to get in all the little bits on the hand and whatnot. Okay, then uh, Reichlin Flesh Shade, so just a, a kind of a lighter uh, shade for the, uh, the bib there. And you could have done that with uh, the Seraphim Sepia or something like that, but any of those is fine. Just uh, something that's not quite as dark as the other ones. Uh, okay, Nulin Oil, um, picking out some of the extra details there on the metallics. Kind of doing it blotchier, sort of, than, than covering everything up. Because I just want it to be, uh, kind of darken up some of the metallics here, there, and everywhere, but not completely. Okay, so now I'm on to the highlights. So... First off, I'm doing Warboss Green on all of the Orc Flesh. And you can kind of see there, I'm just trying to pick out all the flat areas, trying to stay away and maybe blend a little bit into the shading. And uh, then we're going on to the Grot there, Elysian Green on all that. So same idea, just trying to pick up the areas and uh, blend them a bit. So. It ends up kind of going on first a little bit uh, sketchy, and then I try to blend it a little bit more. Okay, now I'm doing some of the um, Nahalika Oxide. Uh, so this is the patina sort of look 
one of those uh, technical paints. I really like this stuff, how it goes on. Um, doing that on all the things that were warp lock bronze, so that's going to give it kind of a brass look uh, or a copper, uh, cor corroded copper sort of a look. And it's really important, I think, when you're doing this, that you get that really strong line which join up. So right, the deep crevices is kind of the most important bit. Rise of Rust, uh, sort of doing some splotchy dry brushing type of a thing on all of the silver bits. So just uh, kind of random splotches here and there, just to give the idea of some rust, but not too much. You, want to, you don't want to overdo that. At least I don't want to. Uh, once that's uh, done, I'm using the same medium dry brush for some Necron compound. So just trying to be really careful getting this on all the raised edges and nothing uh, else around there, because the metallics have a tendency to do that. And that's actually all the uh, metallics that I end up doing on this, uh, except for the next one, which is Hashute Copper. Uh, but I mean like the silvers. I didn't do any line highlighting or anything like that, just the dry brush. Okay, this is what I'm doing here is trying to pick out all the raised areas. And so the idea is this is the patina sort of uh, wearing off. Okay, a bit of Dark Reaper on the uh, boots there. I also did all the hoses uh, as a black sort of a color, so they, uh, they get that same sort of treatment. There you go. Okay, and then uh, highlighting that up next with Thunderhawk Blue. So just trying to uh, pull the highlights further away from everything as I do each one. Um, I really wasn't sure how I wanted to do those hoses, but uh, I ended up just doing them plain black, basically. Wazdaka Red, uh, uh, highlighting on the pants there, and the, the Grot Orderly has the, the same pants as the, uh, the Pain Boy. So there we go. And squig orange uh, final highlights on the pants. So just trying to get some edges there, pick up some of the folds and things like that. And doing the same on the pain boy. Okay, highlighting up the band aid there with uh, Talaran sand. And uh, yeah, just trying to avoid all of the deep uh, shadows and crevices and all that sort of thing. Painting those in. Try to keep the colors uh, pretty solid with a touch of blending as they go into the shade. Okay, Paled Witch Flesh going on, uh, highlighting on the, the apron here. Um, probably could have done the, the base coat, the Rackerath Flesh on a first, just to help blend that with the shade, because I find that it's a bit harsh to go from the shade right up to Paled Witch Flesh. Okay, Scrag Brown highlighting up that Mornfang Brown. And again, just trying to avoid all of the deep areas that I just shaded. And I do go back later and touch up some of those uh, rivets with some Agrax Earthshade just to make them stand out a bit more. Okay, highlighting up that bandit again with Karak Stone. So doing less and less each time, just trying to get some of those edges there, as you can see. And uh, I don't video it, but I do actually use one of the edge paints uh, after this just to get one more layer of highlight. Um, just didn't quite like how dark it was, so I wanted a bit more. Okay, Deathclaw Brown, uh, final edge highlighting on these leather straps there, just trying to get the edges on things and corners and that sort of thing. And doing the same on the, uh, the back stuff there. So all of those leather bits get the same treatment. Okay, next highlight here, Scarsnet Green for the flesh. And, uh, yeah, just trying to make sure that I can get those edges on there. Some of the colors seem to be washing out a bit on the video, at least the one I'm seeing right here in front of me. So depending on your screen, um, you may or may not see all the layers of highlight there. Well, and if it's off screen, you won't see anything. Okay, Ogren Camo, or Ogren Camo, depending on how you pronounce it. Highlighting up the highlights on the grot there, finishing those off. And then uh, final highlight is Kislev Flesh. Um, trying to just get some of the edges of the lips and elbows and eyebrows, that sort of thing, just to get some of the impression that the, uh, the, f the green is kind of worn off on the orc. Just kind of, it makes it look a little bit more realistic, if that's a possibility with orcs. Okay, Fenrisian Gray is the base color here for those uh, vials, and so that's kind of a, I guess, a glassy kind of a color, a uh, sky-ish color or whatever. And then Mephiston Red is going to be the liquids in there. So I'm just trying to paint a nice straight line, kind of level with how gravity would show it. And doing that with all the different vials that I've just painted the Fenrisian Grey on. 
So this is a bit of a fidgety sort of a task. Yeah. Sometimes they, you get the line right away and sometimes you have to even it up and then it ends up creeping as you do that. Okay, now I'm taking Towelite Ochre and trying to draw a highlight along the top of it there with a fine, fine brush and just try to get that as straight as I can. I did do a bit of touching up just going back with the red just to make sure it all uh, was straight as I could. Then I'm taking Paler Witch Flesh and drawing two lines, so a vertical line and a horizontal line across the bottom there. Uh, now I'm doing some uh, checkered patterns. So as you can see, I'm just taking uh, Celestia Gray and drawing in a grid and then trying to fill them in. So my grid isn't perfect there, so I'm going to go back with Abaddon Black and uh, touch up some of those areas. So just uh, trying to make them, the, the checkers a bit more even by drawing back in some of those lines. And you can see it doing the same thing on the, that claw. So those are the two checkered bits, kind of the back side of the hand and that little shoulder piece. Uh, and then I'm taking white scar and I'm just highlighting up some of those checkers and they're done. So, yep, you can see they're, from close up, they're not super perfect, but uh, you know, top level, they're just great. Okay, now I'm taking some blood for the blood god and trying to get him some blood splatters on here. And uh, yeah, experimenting with this a bit and having, varying degrees of success. So found out that I needed to get lots of paint on that medium dry brush so then I could splatter it. You can see it kind of getting on his arms. And then I take that same brush and I kind of splotch it on the edges of some of those claws and do the same on his apron, which unfortunately is off camera. There you go. And splotching it on there a bit more. So putting a bit on the base. Okay, and that's it. All done. Uh, the full painting guide will be on my blog, which is listed here and it's also in the description. Um, be sure to check that out. If you have any questions, feel free to post them on this or over on my blog. I try to respond to as many questions as I can. Anyways, hope you like this tutorial. There'll be lots more orc stuff. I've got tons of orcs and lots more to paint. Hope you enjoyed it and see you next time.